Hey everybody, welcome back to Renaissance Man Media. Uh, in my next Bond movie, today I'm doing The Man with the Golden Gun. Um, so this is one that I'd seen, I started like I think the first hour of, and then I never got around to finishing it. So I finally finished it this time. And overall my thoughts are, this is not a Bond film that I think ranks very highly. But that being said, I don't think there's anything like atrocious about it. There's nothing where you're like, oh god, that's just awful. It's just a little lackluster. But... Like, if we talk about the, the pros and the positives, Roger Moore, this is his second Bond movie. This came out in 74. He looks young. He looks fit. He looks like he's good to go. Like, this is more in his prime. That being said, I don't think he has the charm that he had in Live, Let, Die. Many people have made the point that, you know, he's kind of mean to women in this movie. I get that. Um, I don't know. To, to me, it didn't bother me as much. That being said, it wasn't like, oh, man, that was a great scene. I, that's, that's my thing. Uh, the Bond girls... They're both kind of weak. I did like uh, Ma Adams' character, but she dies like halfway through the movie, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, uh, Mary Go Goodnight doesn't do anything for me. Um, she's a klutz, and she's not even... To me, she has a good body, but her face isn't anything special. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I mean, obviously, I'm a schmuck right now, so... Uh, but, yeah, so just to get into the plot, the plot of the movie is that uh, this man with the golden gun played by Christopher Lee, is an assassin that charges people a million dollars for one shot of his golden gun, but it kills people every time. Uh, and it's made of some special... The bullets are made of gold and some other stuff, but uh, basically there's a, a envelope that gets to uh, MI6 that basically has uh, Scaramanga's fingerprints on it, and he's basically saying something to the effect of, you know, uh, I want James Bond, like, summoned... Or, I want James Bond, like, I I'm coming after him. Uh, in the opening scene, we see uh, Christopher Lee's character, Scaramanga, kill a guy that comes to his island. And his island is pretty cool. It's in, uh, I think it's the South China Sea is where it's located. Yeah, close to Hong Kong. But I think I think that's all pretty cool. Uh, you see his fun house, which is kind of crazy. I wish they would have done a little bit more with that. And then, um, yeah, then it cuts to the start of the film. Uh, we get Roger Moore called into his typical M, you know, like meeting. What do you know about this person? What do you know about the like? I wish someone would make a compilation of uh, Bernard Lee as M and Roger Moore because it's like every time just gets called into. What do you know about this? I mean, I even with Ro Sean Connery, Diamonds Are Forever. What do you know about Diamonds? Like, uh, <laughs> I just feel like they could have. I don't know if that was just the script writing or just his idea, but they could have uh, changed it up a little bit and instead of it being really dry. Um, but the first forty minutes of this film, I I, I really was digging. Uh, Roger Moore ends up going to China, uh, to Hong Kong, that area. Uh, he goes to Macau at one point to a casino, which is a cool scene, trying to track down. Because uh, one of the first leads that he has, or he goes, sorry, he goes to a belly dancer in uh, Beirut, I believe is what they said. And that was the last, there was a double agent that got killed by Scaramanga. And basically, he's trying to track down, okay, where was this guy? And who was he, who did he come in contact with? And someone said, well, you know... The last person he was seen with was this belly dancer. So he goes, checks her out. That scene's kind of cringe. The fight scene in it's bad. And then uh, he eventually gets, he eventually tracks down the guy that's making the bullets, which I all, I liked all that stuff. I thought that was cool. And then he eventually is like, okay, well, who makes him? And then he's like, well, I don't know, but I know, you know, like, or he was asking the guy who makes the bullets, like, where is Scaramango? Who do you, who does the drop off? Whatever. So that's where we meet Ma Adams' character. Uh, there's another cool scene where Roger Moore's walking around like this bottoms up club and like there's a shot and it kills like a guy that see the plot's a, a little, not too complicated, but a little convoluted. There's like some solar plex. It's not solar plex, some solar uh, device that's supposed to help with like solar energy. Anyway, that guy gets killed for it. Uh, he has it on him. It gets stolen. James is looking like he's going to get blamed for it. He gets picked up by who you think might be a bad guy. It ends up being MI6. And uh, they take him to like a ship that had like crashed or something in the South China Sea in the Hong Kong uh, Harbor. And it ends up being like, you know, MI6 headquarters over there. I thought that was really cool. That whole station is really awesome. Um, and then soon after this, like James goes to like this uh, guy that hired Scaramanga. We go to his like mansion, his estate. All that stuff's kind of boring. Then he gets knocked out. Uh, he poses a Scaramanga first, then comes back, gets knocked out, and then they take him to a martial arts school. All that was boring. I mean, that's, it's bad. It's just not interesting, and the fighting is bad. Um, 
And then uh, he eventually meets up with Ma Adams again, or is supposed to, to go to a kickboxing match, and like she's supposed to hand over the uh, solar device. And anyway, that's one of my favorite scenes because she's dead. She got shot by the golden gun. And as he's like about to walk away, Scaramanga sits down and actually talks to them. And Christopher Lee looks pretty cool in like the white suit that he's got. I wish he wore that like the whole time because I'm like, damn, that's a cool villain. And that's what I'll say is like pot pros of this movie is Christopher Lee is a really cool villain. It's just a shame that this movie is so lackluster. There's not a whole lot. There's a car chase scene. Nothing really too special. The car eventually like flies away. It's not even all that interesting or believable because you need flight controls to be able to actually control your flight and car doesn't have any flight controls. So good luck with that. Um, and yeah, like I, I saw people ranking this movie fairly low in their rankings and I was like, ah, oh, surely I'll get more enjoyment out of that. And you know, for me, this is like, this isn't a movie that I despise in any way. There's nothing like negative really for me about this movie. It's just not a whole lot positive, And that's why it's just, for me, it'll probably rank like there'll be movies below it that I'm like, I really don't like that one or like something about it makes me dislike it. And then like man with the golden gun will be like the first one I go to when it's just like, well, now we're in mediocre tier where it's like nothing negative, but nothing that I really can look back and go like, Oh, I love that moment. Like I said, the first 30, 40 minutes I was totally in and I was like, man, people are wrong about this movie. And then the, the finish is a little lackluster. Their final showdown isn't all that interesting. Uh, Nick knack. He's kind of funny, but I think he's in it too much and he's not intimidating or menacing. He's just a little wacky. Um, but yeah, I, I wish, I wish they would have taken Christopher Lee as Scaramanga and just done a little bit more with it and made it a little bit more intimidating and, and scary than what they did. But uh, overall, the ranking that I would give this film, uh, for me, this would be a $5 bin uh, James Bond movie, which, like I said, that kind of shows that even a bottom James Bond movie is still a $5 bin and not like, you know, a coaster movie. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my rankings. Like I said, Roger Moore still in good form here he just doesn't have like he's got no one to bounce his like energy off of other than christopher lee and i think they only get like two to three scenes together and that's it so there's just there's not really another actor that he can like have good conversations with to be honest so uh yeah that that was that's pretty much it like i said uh for me it's meh uh the next movie that i'll be watching is the world is not enough which i haven't seen in probably over five years but i'm lo i'm really looking forward to it because i grew up I love that movie. I love that video game for N64 as well. And uh, this one might be my favorite. The World's Not Enough might end up being my favorite, but I need to rewatch it to confirm. But anyway, that's it for now. Uh, look forward to the next video being uploaded shortly.